Welcome to Aging in Style with me, Lori Williams. I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe you can follow your dreams at any age. My grandmother's journey with dementia ignited a passion in me to work with seniors. I've spent the past 13 years learning about seniors and aging. In my mid-50s, I followed my own dream and founded my company, where I use my expertise to help seniors locate housing and resources. On this podcast, we cover all aspects of aging. Join us each week to meet senior living experts and inspirational seniors who are following their dreams. The fact is, we're all aging, so why not do it in style? Hi, welcome to Aging in Style with Lori Williams. I'm so glad you've joined us today because we have a really great topic. I feel like it's one that is going to resonate with a lot of our seniors out there and a lot of their adult children too. (laughs) So today our topic is maintaining independence as we age. And in senior living, I hear this a lot where maybe we're talking to a senior about moving to an independent living community because maybe they're needing some meals or um, help with medication. So maybe it's time to take that next step. Or maybe we're talking to them about bringing in some care to their home or using some assistive devices, things to make their life a little easier. What we're trying to say is we're trying to help you. (laughs) What they're hearing instead is you're trying to take my independence away. And I think that is just a real, you know, a perception maybe that they have that we really need to work to overcome. So today we are going to cover the top five barriers that threaten our seniors, threaten their independence. And we're going to talk about solutions to overcoming these to keep them independent. So in the U.S., I mean, so many of us live far away from our parents. And, you know, many seniors or kids are two, three states away. They don't have anyone, maybe they don't have family member close by. And they may be too embarrassed to tell their kids that, hey, you know, I'm I'm having trouble cooking dinner. I don't want to cook anymore. Or I'm having physically I'm having some issues doing it. So they may be embarrassed to ask for help and you know, nothing is said. And also we add on to, you know, into the mix, we add COVID where, you know, our seniors have become even more isolated and adult children have not been able to visit like they would normally visit. So, you know, we're going to talk about these things and, and things that we can do to help our senior family members stay independent. So the positive side because I do like to look on the positive. (laughs) The positive side to all of this is that we live in a time where there is just a plethora of services and technology um, that will help our seniors maintain their independence. There's something coming out every day. I mean, I learn something new, a new app or a new technology. You know, there's always something new that I'm like, oh, cool. Why didn't I think of that? (laughs) So we're going to cover some of those as we try to overcome these five barriers. So the first barrier to independence is taking our medication. And according to the American Society of Consultant Pharmacists, over 90% of seniors have at least one chronic condition and nearly 70% take at least one medication and over 50% take two medications every day. And I can tell you, I speak with seniors sometimes who take you know, anywhere from eight to 15 medications. So that's, that's a lot of medication. And of course, as we all know, taking the correct medication at the right time is the key to maintaining your good health. So if you are taking blood pressure medications or thyroid or um, something for your heart, you need to be taking those as prescribed. You know, like if it's at 9 a.m., you need to take your blood pressure pill. You need to take it 9 a.m. every morning. And what happens with a lot of seniors, maybe, you know, there could be some memory loss and they forget to take it. Or, I mean, medication, let's face it. I mean, I forget to take my meds sometimes or, you know, I take vitamins and I may, you know, in the evening think, gosh, did I take my vitamin D? I don't I don't know. <laughs> and so, I mean, that's that's a common thing that can happen. We just, we get into a routine and then sometimes we forget, did we take it or, or not? So let's start off with a couple of easy ways to overcome this. So we can always start off with one of the simple pill boxes. So that just those little plastic boxes, you can get them at the pharmacy. A lot of people give them out for free. And that would just be, you know, seven days of medication. You fill them up, say every Sunday, put all your meds in there, and then you know that you take them. There's also, you know, fancier boxes, maybe some that cover the month that you can fill up or have, you know, a family member if someone's close by, if you need some help, they can fill it up. 
There's also, um, and I just learned this one, there's a smartphone app called Mango Health that you can set reminders and it will, it's like a little alarm and it'll set off, say nine o'clock, take your thyroid medication. There's also um, something called Reminder Rosie, which I thought was just a really cute name. And what it is, is a personalized alarm clock and you set it up, it'll send you voice reminders for like doctor's appointments, medications, um, just all, whatever you want to set it for, it can do. So thanks to technology, there are also some really super cool um, automated medication dispensers. And some of them will actually, you can set them up so it'll alert your kids if you didn't take your medication. So they call that one the um kind of like a tattletale. (laughs) So it'll send them, I believe it's a text it'll send. So there's all kinds of different ones and all different ways you can set them up. And then if, you know, any, if, if these solutions are just not enough, or maybe you start off and they're great for a while, but you need the next step, there's always home care where you could have a um, a companion or caregiver who would come in and do your medication reminders. Um, It's not, inexpensive. So you might want to have them come on and help with some other things too. So maybe with meals or, or just a companion just to have some socialization. We talked a lot about um, home care and home health and what the difference is with Kevin Jones from Bright Star on an earlier podcast. I believe it was episode six. I'm going to refer back to several podcasts that we've covered throughout this and we'll put them in the link so that you'll know you can go back and listen to them. Okay, the second barrier that threatens our independence would be meals. And this one is huge because if we're not eating properly, we are not, you know, maintaining good health. We're not, you know, maintaining good well, you know, healthy well-being. So this is a this is a huge one that I hear a lot from seniors who just, you know, they're not eating right. They're just going to the grocery and maybe just buying cereal or junk food. You know, they're just, they're not getting what they need. And the reason that a lot of seniors that this happens is, you know, there's maybe it's mobility issues. Maybe they have, you know, hip pain, knee pain, back pain, and it just makes it so hard to, you know, be in a kitchen and cooking, you know, that, you know, it's just, it's, beyond they just can't do it or maybe they have arthritis in their hands and they can't chop any longer it's just too too difficult or if you imagine you know an 88 year old lady with arthritis and some back issues trying to drain water from a pot of pasta i mean that's just a recipe for disaster right there so these are some reasons why our seniors will just start you know skipping meals or just eating fast food or processed food. They also, there could be depression and maybe unmotivated to cook. I know I feel unmotivated to cook quite often, (laughs) but it's not from depression. It's just I don't feel like doing it. Um, There could also be some memory issues at play. So, you know, and, and what happens is that they just try to do the easy thing and they'll just skip meals, or like we said, or they just eat junk food. So some options or solutions to overcome, there's always Meals on Wheels. And there, you know, throughout the U.S., there's Meals on Wheels programs are all a little different. I know in my area right now, due to COVID, they will bring all five meals, deliver them, and they're frozen. And they're kind of like, they're like a lean cuisine, but they don't have like a lot of salt. They're for seniors. So they're not bad. I've actually had one before and it was, it was okay. You just pop it in your microwave and, uh, but it's, you know, it has all the nutrients that you need. Also, the senior center, most places have, um, most towns have a local senior center. Again, they're all different. And with COVID, I always have to say this, that darn COVID, um, a lot of them are not open right now. So you can't go in. And that would be the case with my senior center in my town. But what's really cool is that every Tuesday and Thursday, if you're a member, you can sign up and pay $4.00. And then you just drive through, you line up in the parking lot, and you get a meal that's from a restaurant. So it could be like from a, like a, there's a restaurant here in town that's just known for their home cooking. So maybe like, you know, pot roast or whatever, some kind of home cooked meal they get. Um, sometimes they do Chinese. So it's all restaurants that they have, they've worked with to, prepare these meals and they serve them to the seniors. And I think typically they have anywhere from 150 to 200 
who drive through and get their meal. And like I said, all they pay is $4. So you might want to check with your senior center to see if they're doing anything like that. You can also look into meal delivery. So we all know Uber Eats. I know we have used that quite a bit during COVID, more than we probably should. (laughs) But there's also meal deliveries that are specifically for seniors. And some that I found um, were Freshly. Freshly is one. I think anyone can do Freshly. But there's Silver Cuisine. There's Mom's Meals. um, And then there's also for Healthy Meals. And this could be for anyone. Snap Kitchen, Freshly, and Magic Kitchen. So you can find them all. Actually, all you have to do is just look up meal delivery and all kinds of options pop up. I don't know, you know, you'd have to check each one out to see if they cover your area. But I mean, if you're in a big area like Dallas, you probably have access to all of these. And then there's also um, a thing called Chefs for Seniors. And that's pretty cool, too, because they do something a little different. They come, they make an appointment, they come to your house and they meet with you. They find out what food you like. They sit down and they meal plan with you to decide which meals you want for the week. Then they go to the grocery, they buy all the fresh ingredients, they come back to your house and they cook it all right there for you. So you can visit, of course, it's socially distanced right now, but you're getting kind of that, well, you're getting that socialization piece, plus you're getting a healthy meal. They put it all in your refrigerator and then you just heat them up throughout the week. So that's called Chefs for Seniors. And um, I'll put a link also for this because we did interview them on a one of our podcast episodes. And it's just, I think it's a very interesting and really cool concept. So I crossed paths recently with a gentleman who shares my passion for seniors. His name is Jimmy Zolo, and he shared with me that after both of his grandparents had moved into a senior care community, his family's world was just turned upside down as they became caregivers overnight. As you know, being a caregiver to someone close to you is often overwhelming, and there's just so much for you to manage, even with the support of living in a senior care community, like making sure your loved one has all the products they need and keeping them stocked when stuff runs out. Well, Jimmy had that problem too. And he was scrolling through all of these product reviews across the internet. And like most of us in the sandwich generation, we don't have enough hours in the day. So it can end up being way too time consuming and frustrating. He wished there was a simpler way to shop for his grandparents. And then of course the pandemic hit, which prevented visitation to the communities, making this process even more difficult. So Jimmy decided to launch his own business to solve this problem. He found it Joe and Bella to make shopping for older adults simple. They carry everything from comfy clothes to creative gifts. They even have toiletries that can be automatically reordered and tech that makes caregiving easier. And what I love, and I know y'all will love this too, is that each and every product on Joe and Bella has been carefully selected by caregiving experts. Jimmy is giving us an exclusive offer for the listeners of this podcast. You can use promo code STYLE to receive 10% off your first purchase at Joe joeandbella.com. That's code S-T-Y-L-E, style, for 10% off at joeandbella.com. So our third barrier is socialization. And again, that has been made so much more difficult with COVID because we can't get out. We can't volunteer. We A lot of people aren't able to go to church because, we, I mean, we don't want to expose to COVID. So, um, so some things that we found people really doing is really embracing technology. And we've seen seniors, I have been so impressed with y'all. I mean, really, really have, you know, embraced technology. Now, I will say it's not always easy for everyone. And um, so there is a really cool thing called GrandPad, if you haven't heard of it. Um, Google it, GrandPad. It is a tablet, super easy to use, and allows you to connect with your family. So like, I mean, Facebook like a lot of seniors are on Facebook. My mom is on Facebook, but <laughs> she's 81 and technology is very difficult to kind of walk her through it, um, you know, from long distance. And I was trying to walk her through to record a video for my daughter who was turning 18. And that was quite um, quite a process. <laughs> I won't go into detail, but I had to have a glass of wine. But anyhow... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mom, if you're listening. So, but this grand pad is awesome because it's very easy to use. 
And like I said, go and Google it. There's a video, like a testimonial of a lady explaining how she uses it and how easy it is. And the really cool thing is that your family members, the grandkids can upload photos to it so that the senior feels like they're not missing out. They feel super connected to their family. They feel um, that they are a part of their daily life. And uh, like I said, it's just if they're wanting to talk to someone, it's just a matter of just hitting a button. It's not trying to log into Facebook or get on FaceTime or Skype or Zoom or whatever, which can be, you know, a little more difficult. Um, the other solution, we've really seen the senior centers um through COVID, just do a lot of really, I I know my local senior center has just really risen to the occasion and they do games and education. They do all kinds of things online on Facebook Live. So that if you're on Facebook, that's a way to connect. Now in normal times for socialization, um, I would say also joining a senior center is a great way to meet other people, get that socialization piece and, you know, hopefully with vaccination here, we will be reopening senior centers before long. I, I hope so. And then that kind of goes along with volunteering as well, that once things are back to normal, we can start, you know, with our volunteer programs and, you know, volunteering through church and in the schools and any other way that you would want to be involved. And then activities in a senior community. And this is, you know, if, if there's a point where you're really staying home and you can't get out and you want to be around other people, this is when I say, you know, let's think about going to a retirement community. They do tons of really amazing activities. And we did an episode, let's see, it was episode 25, Activities in Senior Living, It's Not What You Think. And we interviewed a just amazing person who works at a retirement community. And she talked about all the cool things they do. And it's it's not just bingo. I mean, you might think, oh, I don't want to go play bingo. But no, it's so way beyond bingo. So go back and listen to that episode. Our fourth barrier to being independent is mobility and safety. Fall prevention is the key. We do not want to fall because that can open up a whole (laughs) a whole bag of worms is that the term bag of worms something like that anyhow one in four seniors over 65 will have a fall one in four that's according to the national council on aging so let's prevent falls right so how do we prevent them you know check for fall hazards around the house throw rugs, clear paths, don't have like magazines and boxes and things kind of blocking your path. So you're just kind of doing like a maze trying to get through your house, then you're just, you know, setting yourself up for a fall. Minimize clutter, like get rid of the magazines and newspapers, anything that you could step on and, you know, and slip. Put night lights around your house, especially on your way to the bathroom, because that's where a lot of falls happen on the way to the bathroom. Some other things with technology, smart home devices, like the lights that turn on before you walk into a dark room. I think those are really cool. That would be a, you know, excellent addition. And like I said, most falls happen in the bathroom. So install grab bars, have raised toilet seats, lighting again, make sure the lighting is good. Work on balance and strength training. You know, maybe your doctor could order some physical therapy. If you're finding that you're very weak or you're kind of a little unsteady on your feet, maybe we need to add some physical therapy. And a doctor could order that through home health and your Medicare would cover it. So we've talked about that on some of the podcast episodes too. Embrace assistive devices, guys. Use the cane, use the walker. There's tons of different types to use out there. And then also, when we're talking about technology, maybe add security cameras where kids can check in on parents. There's all kinds of neat technology, um, things that are controlled via smartphones where your kids can check in on you. And if need be, add a medical alert, like a pendant, a bracelet, even a smartwatch. There's Guys, there are so many different ones out there. I mean, it's amazing. And then if you're finding that you're really unsafe at home, that's when we could add help from a caregiver, a companion, and that's through home care. And uh, we talked about that earlier about medication. Maybe, you know, the time would come that you would need to add a service and, you know, maybe they could help you with this too. Or maybe it's time to go to independent living or assisted living. And we talked a lot about this in episode 20. We did a conversation about fall prevention 
and Jackie Archer was our guest and she gave lots and lots of great tips. So go back and listen to that because that is that is really key to keep from falling. So we really want to, I just want to stress fall prevention. <laughs> and then our fifth barrier is transportation. And according to the AARP, about 600,000 seniors stop driving each year. Okay, you stop driving, what happens? Well, it increases isolation. Giving up driving can negatively impact your health and well-being. And I have to say, it's probably the hardest discussion to have with your senior loved one, especially with men. I mean, it's just, that's kind of the last you know, thing about their independence. And it's so hard to have to give those keys up. But there comes a time where, you know, it's it's unsafe. So we have to have those difficult conversations. So what do we do if we take the car away? How are they going to get around? Well, again, for transportation ideas, I mean, you could do the home care, have an aid. So say you have someone coming in to help with mobility, you know, help with medication or help with meals. If you're staying home, you could you could add the home care aid to help you with that. You could also go to independent living. This is when a lot of people choose to to go ahead and make a move to independent or assisted living because maybe they need the meals and the socialization and the help with mobility, you know, and, and then the transportation as well. And so if you're still at home and you just can't drive, that's it. There's other things you can do. There's Uber, there's Lyft, there's a thing called Go Go Grandparent. And what that is, I thought it was like a, I was wrong in what I thought, but I thought it was sort of like Uber, but no. What it is, it's for a senior who can't use a smartphone or doesn't have a, a smartphone. So, you know, when you call an Uber, you have to, it's on an app and, you know, it, it could be a little confusing. So, How it works is it's a concierge service and it connects the seniors with Uber or Lyft. So they can just they can use a touch tone phone and just call and go ahead and schedule their Uber that way. Also, they screen the drivers and this is really cool. They can text to a family member about the ride that, okay, grandpa made it to the doctor's office, we just dropped him off. So I think that's kind of like a really nice extra level of safety. And then also the grand pad that I mentioned earlier, they partner with Lyft on an app, so they can use their grand pad to schedule a ride. There's also public transportation options. Um, here in my area, there's a, it's called SPAN, and it's a service that's available by appointment. They're handicapped accessible, but I would check, check your area and see what kind of public transportation they have, and they have something specifically for seniors or um, handicapped people. Also, friends, neighbors, volunteers through church, you know, those are people to reach out to and see if they would help you with getting to doctor's appointments and making sure you have groceries and that sort of thing. So I hope this helps kind of show you what the barriers are that threaten our independence as we age, but that there are lots and lots of solutions. Solutions if you want to stay in your home and then solutions if you want to go to independent living or assisted living. And be sure to go and check out all the other podcasts that relate back. I'm going to have them all listed in the comments, but I think, you know, we'll go into more detail with these and I, I think it'll be very enlightening. Okay, so thanks for joining us for another episode of Aging in Style. Be sure to share this with your friends and family members. And if you have questions or want to go and uh, look for additional resources, please visit my website at loriwilliams-seniorservices.com. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.